So in the last recording, we learned uh, about the different components of uh, the CL4 STEM conceptual framework from Professor Matli. Today in this video, I'll be talking to uh, Dr. Samin and Mr. Rafiq. They are uh, science experts of the CL4 STEM project. We will hear from them more about the different components of uh, PCK. So yeah, Shamin, would you like to start? Thank you, Zina. So uh, first uh, component of the framework is uh, knowledge of science subject matter. And uh, uh, we often assume that teachers uh, know their subject well, but this is not always true. And there are at least three reasons for this. First, teachers have come from the same system. And even if they have learned science for more number of years than their students, they may not have got a chance to revise uh, their own misconceptions. In fact, research shows that teachers share many misconceptions with students and even lay people. The second problem with science teachers is that uh, they often have higher degree in one of the science domains, such as biology or chemistry or physics. However, teachers who have a degree in biology are often ill-equipped Ill uh, to teach physics and vice versa. And the third reason is science is continuously developing and newer things are being discovered. The trends in science also shape the curriculum. For example, till uh, last uh, century, environmental issues were not given much attention. But now, justifiably, they're uh, one of the core areas of science curriculum. And teachers may not be aware of nitty-gritties of this or any uh, such uh, newly introduced topics. Therefore, we must in, uh, ensure that teachers are getting continual inputs to improve their understanding and update their knowledge. Uh, we also need to ensure that inputs are effective, that is, teachers are learning from it and it is getting translated into their teaching. Uh, in all the modules, we have tried to provide state-of-art knowledge and conceptual clarity on topics covered in the uh, respective modules. We have also highlighted the common misconceptions which students may have uh, and uh, possible strategies to address them. Teachers may discover other misconceptions among their students. And we believe that the modules will prepare them to come up with novel strategies to address them as well. Shamin, I want, want you to elaborate again on a very important component uh, of uh, the framework, CL for STEM framework, which is uh, the nature of science and the big ideas behind the discipline. So uh, like, as I think Professor Matli was also pointing out that we are not just talking about the content knowledge, but also the bigger philosophy behind the uh, scientific practices. So would you like to uh, say something on that? I think this is very important uh, understanding of nature of science because science is not just a body of knowledge, but a way of knowing or, or thinking. How one arrived at a certain uh, conclusion is considered equally important in science as, uh, as the conclusion itself. And students must know this, and hence they must know how some of the fundamental laws were discovered and verified. Uh, weaving scientific knowledge in a narrative of how certain theories developed uh, is a great way to help students to understand the nature of science. Development of atomic theory is a, a very good example of this, and it is used in the uh, atomic structure uh, module. Uh, fictional stories uh, such as Archimedes' story, uh, they may also help uh, students to understand not only the scientific concept, but also their applications and uh, it, you know, it uh, helps them to uh, remember uh, things better. Uh, students must also understand that uh, science and society influence each other and Galileo's court case uh, uh, or the uh, upheaval caused by Darwin's theory of solution and the constant opposition of, uh, of these theories based till date are uh, some of the examples uh, of uh, such uh, you know stories and one we must uh, also remember that science is after all a human endeavor and hence uh, susceptible to human biases and sociocultural milieu uh, however there are inbuilt mechanisms in science which ensure the progress of science uh, some of the examples of these uh, mechanisms is peer review uh, and uh, that is, there is uh, verification by other experts in the field and uh, nothing is accepted 
just because it comes from a certain respected person or because it comes from an authority. Uh, also, a certain level of open-mindedness among, uh, I mean, it, it is kind of prerequisite to uh, do science to discover something. Uh, you often have to accept shortcoming of the theories you uh, proposed. And students uh, need to be encouraged to apply this uh, systematic scientific thinking in their lives. This will in, it, I mean, involve uh, verification and triangulation of data, seeing statistical relationship rather than clinging to few personal uh, examples or observations. Uh, recognizing that current uh, conclusions are tentative and as new data comes, they may uh, change. Uh, or ability to question one's own beliefs and uh, uh, have open-mindedness to look uh, uh, at the world. Uh, the, these are some of the things uh, teachers must uh, try to inculcate among students. However, I understand that in context of teaching, it will not be about theory or something, but small things uh, in the surrounding, which we often believe that, you know, eating something will uh, lead uh, cause may, may cause certain disease or may make you strong or something. Simple uh, uh, examples can be taken and, you know, really uh, one can uh, see whether they are true or not. So I think uh, these are two good ways, I mean, using history of science and also inculcating inquiry of daily issues uh, in teaching science that, that these are the two ways of, uh, to help students to understand nature of science. Now we would like to hear uh, something from Rafiq about uh, st probably student misconception and learning difficulties uh, with science learning. So while designing these uh, modules, all the themes uh, and also uh, theme from Tata Institute of Social Sciences, we made sure that uh, we first study uh, the misconceptions or common misconceptions in that area so that our module or what we are designing is uh, trying to address those modules and teachers know about it. Teachers learn that before um, teaching any topic, it is better to first find out what are the learning difficulties in that area or what are the common misconceptions which are, which are generally seen in those areas. So if I give one example, um, uh, in ecology module, uh, the Nigerian team which was leading that module, they uh, have listed the common modules, for example, how uh, people, can, uh, people or students confuse ecosystem uh, with ecology or how they confuse between food web and food chain. And uh, they also have listed uh, strategies to make sure that these kind of misconceptions are corrected when uh, teachers are actually using these modules. So if uh, I can take another example from uh, cell uh, structure and function module, which is developed by the, uh, or that development was led by uh, Tanzanian team. And they have also looked at, uh, listed the common misconceptions, how, uh, people confuse between uh, cell types and plant cell and animal cells. How generally, because they see 2D uh, representation of uh, cell structures, they believe that cells are also 2D. So they have, they have listed these kinds of misconceptions. And uh, so some topics are also, for example, like ecology, there you can see various components of it, but it is very difficult to see interactions uh, because they happen very slowly or maybe they are at a very different scale. So that's why it is important that uh, we understand that these kind of difficulties are because of the, the nature of that topic or nature of that subject. And uh, two, uh, then they have used various tools which actually can help. So for example, use of uh, simulation is one option or other option are basically uh, showing some of these uh, interactions which happen slowly either through video, audio visual uh, media. So this kind of uh, uh, approach all teams have taken so that the teachers or NQTs are aware of misconception in that area and also the uh, strategies to overcome those, kind, those misconceptions. Thank you, Rafiq. So you not just covered the uh, like, uh, like prominent misconceptions in this area, but also uh, like the useful instructional strategies that can be adopted to address them. So uh, now we would also like to hear more uh, from Shamin. 
how do we like uh, rightly represent the content to learners uh, okay so uh, in addition to you know natural language in which we often speak or write science is represented through uh, many other uh, modalities uh, such as diagrams simulations graphs equations numbers and even through gestures and sounds uh sometimes different uh, representations highlight different information of the same system which help helps us to create a richer understanding of it for example we use different kinds of maps such as contour maps weather maps and maps which represented represent flora and fauna of uh, a particular area to understand the relationship between them uh, these uh, different factors uh similarly different representations of the same phenomena are useful in different context for example we can plot a graph of temperature versus pressure we, we also have equation for it and we can also create a table for it you know graph helps us to understand the pattern or the relationship a table can help us to understand the exact values and uh, equation can help us to predict a value of uh, of pressure at in any given uh, temperature many of these uh, representations are abstract and they involve understanding the con convention uh, you know you remember the chemical equations they they, they are written in very different way than regular mathematical uh, equations and students need to un understand their uh, uh, convention uh, and students often find it difficult to uh, understand all these different kind of representation unless enough time is spent on teaching and learning of each of the representations students need to develop an ability to understand how one representation is related to other representations of the same system or phenomenon they should also understand which one of them is appropriate in which context and they should be able to translate between different representations and choose the correct representations and so on so teachers also need to uh, spend enough time on uh, teaching different uh, representation practicing enough on translating one from another and helping students what are the limitations and strengths of each of those representations okay thank you uh, for uh, like elaborating about uh, different representations uh, that are very important uh, in learning uh, i would like to come back to uh, rafi another a very important component which is uh, the context of learning so would you like to say yeah. something on that so context actually plays a very important uh, uh, role in learning and while designing these modules all the teams actually paid uh, attention to it so for example all these three countries who were uh, part of this project have a very different uh, context in terms of the biodiversity uh, language culture all of these things so uh, they we tried to basically connect whatever we are uh, including in these modules with their surroundings so i can give one example that uh, in uh, nigeria uh, the so it's a uh, biodiversity hotspot and the module which that team led uh, uh, the designing of that module is uh, on eco uh, ecology so there uh, the module starts with actually an activity where students actually go on a uh, nature walk or an observation walk and where they basically observe their surroundings and later teacher uses that knowledge in basically talking about the concepts which are there in there uh, in that module similarly in the module which tanzania team designed they used because it's a biodiversity hotspot they while talking about various uh, concepts they used the examples from their local context their local uh, culture and because these modules were also be, being used by the uh, countries team from other countries so we did not uh, just basically hand over those uh, modules to one team from another team basically each team adapted the modules created by other teams for example when the bhutan team took modules from nigeria uh, counterparts or uh, from tanzanian team they basically looked at what are the things which uh, are different from in their culture or maybe what are the uh, ideas and examples will be better uh, represented if they use examples from their culture so like that we try to bring in the uh, context of 
teachers and also uh, the uh, students. So there are many activities where through which students and teach, uh, first teachers and later on students will become aware of their surrounding, their context, and also connect it with uh, the scientific uh, ideas which are presented in those notes. Okay, okay. Thank you, Rafiq, for uh, like uh, actually uh, uh, highlighting this fact that it should be very much connected to students' own context and the uh, local environment, like to make the topics more meaningful. So I like thank Mr. Rafiq and uh, Dr. Samin for joining us.